Now that we have our config file created, let's create another file which will store all of our functions. So if we just duplicate this line and call the file functions, and I'm going to quickly create this file inside of the includes directory, PHP file functions.php. For the time being, I'm just going back to index.php because the first thing I want to do is to call the first function. And the only function we're actually going to be calling from within index.php. The file, the function name will be get page. And if we save it, and we can now pretty much close index.php because that's all we need to uh, do inside of this file. Remember, get page uh, function. So if I just copy name of this function, go back to our functions.php, and I'm just going to declare uh, function get page. Okay, inside of this function, what we need to do, basically, we need to figure out what page we need to load first. So what we're going to do is create a variable called file equals, and then get page include, for instance, the name of the function. And then we will require it once by passing it as an argument to this require once language construct. So get page include is the next function. So function get page include. And what this one will do, uh, well, and let's put these brackets on new lines like this. So inside of this get page include, first thing I need to do is to figure out the path with the file name to the file that actually I want to that I actually want to include. Then check if this file actually exists. And if it doesn't, then serve the the error page instead. So what we're going to start with is create the path variable equals and we're going to associate it with another function get page path with file name. As you can see, the names of all these function functions are, are just a combination of a, of a readable kind of uh, phrases. So we know exactly what they're doing. So uh, once we've got this path uh, based on what's in the URL uh, and based on the what's in the URL, because if we check the navigation, when we click on, let's say, about us, we're going to have this about, and then this about should correspond to the file within this page. So we should have uh, about.php. For products, we should have products.php. Same for contacts, contacts.php. Sorry, contact.php. Um, so it checks if one of these obviously is going to be found there. Uh, then we're going to have some value from this path uh, uh, associated with this path variable. And now we can check if an exclamation mark, because we're checking if it's not, uh, is underscore file. So we're checking if this file actually is good. Uh, if it's not, because it's this exclamation mark, obviously, so it checks for the opposite. If it's not, then return. And again, the same file, the same, sorry, function. But this time we're going to pass the argument. And the argument we're going to be passing through is the name of the file that we want to return instead. And if we quickly have a look at our config.php, we have this arrow page file name. So this is where we're going to, uh, this is what we're going to be passing through as an argument. So after this, if we've checked, once we've checked, if it hasn't, then obviously uh, if the path doesn't exist, then we automatically return this arrow page. Otherwise, we are going to simply return the path which we if just got uh, originally from this function. So let's quick, quickly de declare this get page path with file name function. Function get page path with file name. And this one will take an optional argument. As you can see, the first time we call it without the argument, second time we pass through the argument. And the argument, let's call it identifier. And by default, we set it to null. So the first thing we're going to check here, and I'm going to create a few new lines so we can see things a little bit better. The first thing I'm going to check here is, is check if the identifier is null. So if, because it actually has null associated with it, we can check is underscore null and then pass the identifier as an argument. So if it's null, then what we want to do is identifier equals and we're going to fetch it uh, from the URL. So get page identifier, which is another custom function which will give us the identifier from the URL, basically. Uh, in other words, if we haven't got any value associated, we will so we will fetch it from the URL. If we have URL, sorry, the file name, then we're going to use it instead. Okay, so now we're going for the name variable. A name variable will simply use the concat page name with extension 
function. So we pass an identifier, and what this function will do, we'll create in just a moment, will basically append the extension of the .php file. So it's going to be .php after the file. So it's going to return the file name. And then return real path, and we're going to go for the page path. Actually, we don't really need this real path here at all. We just, we just need the page path. Page underscore path. And we concatenate it with the directory separator, as you may remember. We've, used, uh, we've created this constant directory separator, ds, and then name of the file, with the extension after obviously being uh, put through this uh, function. Now, we've created this page path and we've added it to the, uh, the include path. And uh, now I've noticed that we don't really have to because that's the only place we're going to be using this. And because we are using the full path directly to the pages, there won't be any confusion here. So we can actually remove this. Uh, if I just go back to config, we can remove this page path constant from the include path. So now we don't have to worry. We're only going to have partials and whatever is already on the include path on the include path. In other words, there, there won't be any, uh, obviously, problem with us including files with the same name because pages will automatically fetch everything from the pages directly so that's that's all done so we can save this config again without this uh, page path we still need the constant but we don't need it on the on the include path so we can close this config okay so this is where we actually returning uh the the full path to the given uh page now we need to declare these two functions as well first let's declare this concat page with uh, extension so function concat page with extension and again I'm going to put these brackets on uh, new lines same here uh, how's this one this one's okay okay so concat, concat page with a uh, page name with extension we obviously need the page name so name and it cannot be empty so we don't associate any default values here and what we're doing is simply return our trim we want to uh, trim uh, the PHP from the end of the file sorry dot PHP if there is any so name and then we want to trim dot PHP because that's exactly what we want to append to it so PHP so if there's already dot PHP first remove it and then we append it again otherwise if it's just a name string without any extension then obviously it's not going to be able to trim it in which case it will just append the dot PHP to it so that's uh, our concat page name with extension. Next function is this get page identifier. So on the new line function, get page identifier. And here what we're going to do is first of all, we're going to get a request array. So request equals get request function. We'll create this function in just a moment. And then we check if empty request and then we're looking for the segments and segment zero which would indicate what page it is then return and we want to return default page file name so default page file name again if we go back to our config.php our default uh, page file name is index so it's going to be our home page like basically index.php file uh, otherwise if uh, request segment zero is not empty then we simply want to return it and it will become uh, more apparent what this segments this segment is in just a moment so return request segment and index zero so now get request function finally so function get request set of curly brackets well get request will basically check what's in the url so first of all we need the request variable let's create i mean you can call it whatever you want but i'm going to call it request and then what i'm going to associate with it is the super global server server and we want to fetch request uri request uri there we go. As you may remember, request URI basically, if we go back to the browser, if we have something like this, <clears throat> it's going to just give us the forward slash. Otherwise, if we have, let's say, index here, it's going to give us forward slash index. If we have anything after this, it's going to add this as well. So index, let's say about, something like this. Then request URI is all this, basically, whatever's after the domain name. So let's quickly actually go back to the editor and what I'm going to do is go back to index.php 
and what I'm going to actually I'm going to copy the name of this super global here so that is a bit quicker and right at the bit at the top of this file I'm going to echo request uh, URI so if we go back uh, and I'm going to remove what we've got here, refresh the page, and we only have four slash because it's just a domain. We don't have anything after this. However, <coughs> if I was about to put index here, it will not work at the moment because we don't have anything on the server set up yet to point all the requests to our index.php, and we'll set it up uh, in the next video. But for the time being, just so you know, obviously, if I was to go to index, it's going to give me page not found because I cannot find this, pa find this page at the moment. But request URI, basically, this server super global will give us whatever's after the path is after the domain name. Let's go back and back to the functions. So we've got this request URI, and now what we're going to check is do the path variable equals, and we want to explode it with the question mark. Because if we have any queries within the URL, and by query I mean, let me just quickly do it here. The query, I'm just going to do it as a comment. Uh, the query would be, let's say, uh, page, and then question mark um, Q, for instance, equals uh, name or something like this. So obviously we're splitting this with a question mark to check if there's any query. Uh, and then obviously when we're exploding this, then the path index zero will have anything that's on the left hand side of this question mark and the path index one will have everything after this question mark. So that's what we're doing here. Splitting this uh, request, checking what's what's in the URL basically. And then we're passing obviously this request through as an argument. And what we want to get is the, which what's uh, basically the zero index, which will be anything before this question mark, if there is any. If there isn't any, then it's still going to return the array with uh, only one item at index zero, which is going to be basically the, the full path. Okay, so now we've got a path. I'm just going to put it right after this. After this path, what I want to do is to do the query. So query variable equals, and we check in, is set get super global if it is then that's what uh, the query is going to be so uh, basically whatever's in this associated with this get super global array otherwise an empty array this get super global obviously stores what we would get at index one from this uh, obviously line here uh, on this path but we would get a string using this get super global we would get all these uh, parameters basically as an array so it's it's better to use it this way it's much quicker okay next one will be our segments so segments variable uh, segments equals and now what we're doing exploding with the forward slash which is used uh, as a separator for the urls uh, we are going to be exploding our path. But before we explode path, we need to pass it through the trim uh, function as well. So path, and we are also want to remove forward slash on both sides of this path. So say, let's say we've got a scenario, something like a news uh, title. So what would happen here? And then let's say we have this question mark, uh, search, uh, let's say latest. So we have something like this in the URL and I know obviously I'm inside of the PHP file that is, I'm going to put it in between a single quote so it doesn't really highlight it that badly. Okay, so what we've got, this is the U, what we've have URL uh, in, in the URL after the domain name. So what happens first? We get this, all, all this, uh, the entire string would be returned using this request URL with the service of a global. So that will be stored inside of this request variable. Next, we would explode it with the question mark. So that string would be split into two separate strings. First one would be this at index zero on this path will be this forward slash news forward slash title. And the path one with index one would be search equals latest. Now we want the query as well if there is any, and the query is anything after the question mark but rather than having this as a string we're just going to use the super global which will return both uh, this item because it's one item obviously the key and value with the equal in between uh, as an array so rather than sp the, then splitting this with the equal symbol and so on we just get whatever query is there so just pass the super global if it's empty just pass an empty array to this query variable 
So that's basically how we split this here with the path and then obviously query rather than dealing with the, with the query string. Let's just get the, the entire query as an array. So next we do it going for the segment. So we explode in this path, path obviously being the zero item. So it's all on the left hand side. So we explode in this with a forward slash. But if we were to do it without trimming first, then we would first get at zero, uh, index zero, we would get null, nothing, absolutely nothing, because we have this slash here as well. So the first item would be before this slash. That's why we want to trim it on the left and right hand side. If there is any slash on the right hand side, remove it. If there's any slash on the left hand side, remove it as well. So all we are now passing through to this explode by using this trim first is this news slash title. And now when we explode it with the forward slash, this will split this into two items. First one, it will be news. Second one will be title. So at index zero on segments, we're going to have news. At index one, we are going to have title. And that's going to be obviously an array. I hope that makes uh, a bit more of a sense here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is return an array of items. And the first item key will be request. So it's the full request that we got from the URL. Then we are going to have a path, which is the path that we actually uh, got after exploding it with the question mark. So that's the path. Then what we're getting is the query. So if there is any query, we are going to return it as well. If not, then we're obviously going to get an empty array as this line here uh, obviously uh, constructs it. And then we're going to have segments, which will also be an array segment and we obviously will be able to uh, should be able to at least retrieve one item at index zero from this segment okay so that's the get request so now when we call this function here we got this request this whole array and we retrieved the segment item at index zero want to know what's the first after the domain and slash basically want to know this because this is telling us what page we want to load and if we again look at our navigation, after the first slash, we have about here, products or contact for these pages. Obviously for home, we will get nothing. So let's, what's going to happen later? If it, we check in, if it's empty, so if it's nothing, basically, if it's empty, then we are going to serve the default page, which is our index, which is basically represent the home page. Uh, otherwise, we're going to return item at index zero. So we either going to have one of these items or anything else that's going to be in the URL after the forward after the domain name and forward slash, or simply the default page, which is the index. So that's what this whole uh, situation here is going to do. So now let's go back to our index dot uh, PHP, and what I want to do is basically check whether we're going to get anything. So if I'm going to Get, uh, if I'm going to index.php, let's simply echo home page. And if we save it, preview it in the browser now, refresh the page, and there we go. It loads the default home page because in the URL, there isn't anything telling us otherwise. If we had, let's say, about, we are now going to get 404 error, which is represented by page not found because we still haven't set up the server correctly. And this is what we're going to be actually doing in the next video.